from Megan Makes Do and today I want to show you how to make these beautiful snap-on faux fur palms. Um, snap-on palms are perfect for um, if you are doing craft shows and you want to offer a variety of different faux fur palms for people to choose from um, and they're also a great way to make it easier for your customers or for yourself to launder their hats um, because you don't want to necessarily get this faux fur wet. Um, so being able to remove them actually is a great selling point if you are doing craft shows or for personal use, if you like to switch up the color of your faux fur palm, this is a great way to do it. Um, so what you're gonna need for this tutorial is of course, um, some faux fur. So when it comes to faux fur, I really like to pick um, long pile furs, which means that the hair is going to stick off of the fabric. You can see there's the back part, side of the fabric. You want your hairs to stick up at least two inches. Um, so I'd say two to four inches is great because you're gonna get a nice full palm. Anything shorter and it's gonna be kind of short and stubby and just not as flowy. Um, so this uh, particular faux fur I actually picked up at Joanne Fabrics. Um, so you can find them at craft stores, you can buy them online. Um, I'll put a few links in the description for you as well. So besides just your faux fur, you're also going to need some kind of circular template. I like to just turn over my yarn bowl and use that as a template. Um, you can create your own of cardboard. You can also use, um, I've used in the past, um, hummus container lids. Um, you just save one when you're done and that makes a great big, large um, circular template. Um, you're probably gonna want your template to be five to six inches, sometimes a little bit more in diameter um, to get a nice full faux fur palm. Um, you're also going to need some fiber fill stuffing to stuff inside of your faux fur palm. Um, you can also use scraps of fabric, scraps of yarn, um, whatever you need to puff up your, your um, faux fur palm, as well as your snaps. So for the actual palm construction, I always put the male side of the snap onto the palm and then the female side goes into the top part of the hat. Um, so for today's tutorial, we're gonna be using the male part. Um, you will also need some sturdy yarn or some cotton thread um, to sew your palm together, as well as a large and sharp tapestry needle. Um, so I like to make sure I have a nice sharp tip because especially when putting the snap on, it can be a little bit tricky. Um, and you're also going to need a nice pair of fabric scissors for cutting your faux fur palm. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I mark my faux fur palms. Um, so here you can see the direction of the fur is going this way. Um, so I'm gonna start at this end. You can see I've already cut some. And we're gonna be working only on the back side of the faux fur. Um, so you'll notice that if I cut from here, that means that all the fur is laying this way. And I don't have to worry about getting some random <laughs> cuts here and there um, because you don't want to, <laughs> to have some stubby parts of your palm, you want all the hair going one way. Um, so if I'm cutting right from the edge, I know that I'm not cutting off any ends of my fur, like this stuff here. Um, okay, so we're gonna lay down, let's start from this edge over here as well. Um, lay down our template, and what I like to use is either um, a fabric pen, or I like to use Taylor's chalk as well. And we're just going to trace around our template so that we get our nice circle shape. Okay, so here you can see there's our circle. And then this is key to making faux fur palms is the way that you cut them. Now, if I were just to go in and start cutting like I normally would for fabric, um, I'm gonna cut the ends of my fur and I'm gonna have chopped off pieces in my palm and that's not what we want. So the trick to getting a nice full piece um, of fur 
is to cut carefully just from the back. Um, so I'm gonna go in here and just with the tip of my scissors, I'm just barely gonna cut, get to my line. So I'm just cutting this backer fabric. I'm not cutting into the faux fur. Um, you will still have a little bit of shedding, even doing it this way, but this will prevent you from cutting off any like long ends of fur um, and getting those stubby parts. So I'm just, it takes a while. Just gonna continue to cut around carefully using just the tip of my scissors. And you can see I'm just cutting the fabric. You will lose a little bit of the hair um, from the edge like this. <laughs> That's totally normal. It's gonna happen. Um, so I do recommend that you create your palms in an area that you don't mind getting a little fur on. Um, and usually the fur will clean up well with the vacuum. Um, but again, you just wanna cut all the way around, just cutting through the back fabric using just the tip of your scissors as well. Okay, so we, here we have our nice circle of faux fur. Um, so we've cut it around and this is what's gonna look like from the front. And you can see that every part of our hair is still intact. We haven't accidentally chopped off the ends at all. They're all nice and long and beautiful. So now I'm gonna show you how to go from your circle to a pom. Um, so what you're gonna need to do is cut a length of yarn. I find that using um, actual yarn, um, like an acrylic or a cotton, um, actually helps hold the palm together a little bit easier than just the regular thread. Um, so I'm gonna thread my needle with my long piece of yarn. Make sure you keep it very long so you have lots of room. And then just starting on one end, maybe about a quarter inch from the edge, we're gonna stick our needle in and out and pull it through and pull pretty pretty far, um, but make sure that you leave a long tail on this side too so you can pull both sides together when we're crimping it back up. And we're just gonna go in and out like this all the way around. Um, and don't worry about having like super even spacing, it's okay. Um, I probably put mine about half inch to three quarters of an inch apart. Um, but we're just weaving the yarn back and forth, in and out around the edge, all the way around our palm. Okay, so here we've gotten back to the other side. I like to get as close as possible. So I might put like a tiny little stitch in there. Um, and as you can see, as I've been going, the palm's already lending itself to being cinched up. Um, so at this point, we can start pulling on our ends and it's automatically gonna scrunch up your palm. Okay, so you can see it starting to take shape. And this is when we wanna start stuffing our palm. Um, so I'm gonna grab some of that polyfill and I'm gonna stick it inside the palm. And here's the thing that I've discovered with making palms is you wanna have just the right amount of polyfill in. You don't wanna overstuff it because it's gonna be a lot harder to get your ends to like come together. Um, but you also don't want it to not have enough stuffing that it like doesn't hold its shape very well. Um, so it kinda takes some time to get used to and figuring out for yourself like how much is enough um, or too much. But I try to get it just just enough in there that the ends will close really well for me um but i still will have a sturdy palm and it's not like flattening out when i when i scrunched up so once you have enough polyfill in there you'll see it's pretty much almost closed um we're gonna tie a knot with our yarn um, and this part can be a little bit tricky <laughs> because you want to have that opening as small and closed up as possible um so if you give it a good tug, I find that's where having the yarn um, instead of just a regular thread, it tends to hold better. So here we've got it pretty much all the way closed with that first one. 
So, and if I let go, it's not coming all undone. So that's, that's definitely what we want. Um, this is actually, this yarn that I'm using is um, Loops and Thread Joy DK. Um, and this one works really well. It's a, it's a weight three, so it's not going to be like super bulky. Um, and I might also be able to just use this to sew the snap on as well. So, um, we've tied a knot in there and you can see our ends. You can still kind of see the polyfill in there. I can still get my little pinky finger in there, but we're going to be sewing the snap on top of here. So it's okay. And I want to be able to see some of my ends because that's what I'm going to be using to sew the snap to. Um, so here you have your faux fur palm. You can leave it like this if you want. Um, and you can just thread the strings through your hat. Um, and tie it on that way. But I find that the snaps are very secure um, and they just look a lot <laughs> neater and you don't have to worry about seeing any of this, this part. Okay, so I'm going to push my, um, my ends over here um, that I used the yarn to like close the palm with. And now I've threaded my needle um, with a bit of this cotton thread that I use and I've fold it in half so I have a loop at the end um, and I'll show you why in just a second. So I'm going to take my male part of the snap and lay it down over that opening like the hole that I have um, where my ends of the faux fur palm came in. So I'm going to try to grab, you can see I can get my needle through um, the end of the fabric and then poke it up through one of the holes in the snap. And then I'm not going to pull it all the way through. I'm going to find this loop and I'm going to thread my needle through the loop and that's going to secure my thread without me having to tie a knot. Um, so you will maybe get a bit of the fur stuck in there. That's okay. It will happen throughout, um, but you can simply use your needle to kind of thread it back out of the hole. Um, so you don't have as much and then I'm gonna work all the way around making sure that each time I am catching the fabric Not just the fur and going back through the hole and Then again, it's gonna loop so you've got to kind of move your your fur out of the way so it doesn't get too stuck down in there, but again, you can always Pull it out with your needle when you're done. Okay, kind of make sure I'm getting it through the fabric and not just through the fur. Otherwise, your snap won't be very secure. And this can be a little tough on your hands. Um, so if you're having trouble getting the needle through, um, or you're having some <laughs> hand pain, um, you can also use a pair of pliers to push and pull your needle through. Um, sometimes that can help, um, as well as using a thimble. Okay, almost done here. Should I find a piece of fabric? Sometimes it can be tricky to find that hole once you get it through the fabric. Okay, there we go. Wiggle our needle through. Oh, that one's really tough. There we go. Ooh, I don't know why that one was so hard. Um, at least I know it will be nice and secure. So once I've gone all the way around, I'm just gonna make sure that I've got most of my faux fur out of the way of the snap. Um, so that the snap doesn't get stuck on any of it. And you get nice full faux fur palm all the way around. Okay. So at this point, if you're feeling like it's pretty secure, um, 
I'm gonna go back through this hole one more time. Um, you can go around again um, if you feel like you want that added security um, or if it's still kind of feeling loose to you. Um, whatever you're most comfortable with um, is fine. And then all we're gonna do when we're done is we're gonna tie a knot with our thread. I like to do three or four times just to be sure. And then I also will re-thread my ends onto my needle. And then I kind of tuck my needle underneath the snap and pull those ends through just so you don't have <laughs> a bunch of like knotted ends there and then I usually do it once more through to the other side it's almost like I'm weaving my ends in um, like you do for crochet or knitting And then again, just make sure that you pull out any furs that get stuck. And then um, you can either knot your yarn or your thread again here. Um, and it'll be kind of like tucked underneath the snap. Or you can just cut your ends, but I'll put another knot in there just to be safe. And then I use my scissors to cut as close as I can, making sure I don't cut my fur. Okay, and then with these um, threads as well, I'm just gonna tie it one more time and then cut those ends too. So you will possibly see a couple little ends poking out, um, but when the snap is in place, you won't see those, so it's okay. All right, so now we've got our palm with the snap attached. And that's how you make a faux fur palm with a snap. So now I've got my hat and I've already sewn um, my female end here. So make sure that your female end is facing up like this. Don't sew it on like that. Um, and again, like for sewing it onto the hat, um, I make sure it's like right at the top of the hat and I go, in and out from inside the hat to outside the hat. Same as I did for the other, um, the male part, um, but I go around um, at least once or twice with this. And then the palm will, whoops, snap into place and it's nice and secure and ready to wear. Um, so yeah, I'll put some links in the description to um, some faux fur and different tools that we use in this tutorial. Um, and you can also find a photo tutorial on my blog as well, and there will be a link in the description to that. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you decide to make your own faux fur palms, I would love to see them. Um, so make sure that you tag me on social media with at Megan Makes Do, um, as well as using hashtag Megan Makes Do so I can see. So I hope you found this helpful, and I can't wait to see all your palms.